Norman, you're coming off of a draw from your last fight. What was your experiences from that and have you learned anything and, and maybe changed anything for this uh, preparation this time around? If anything, um, in Brazil I learned that um, you know, if I feel like the fight's ever close at all, uh, going into the third round, um, to push forward, try and go for the finish. You know, I had in my own mind that I was still winning a fight, even though the point deduction was taken away. I still thought I was doing enough, um, but I still forgot that I was in his uh, his home turf. I was in Brazil, and uh, I was in his territory, and uh, and that was the case of the fight. You know, so I, I've, I've been there, I've experienced it, and uh, if, I'm, if I'm ever in that situation again, I, I know what to do. I know to uh, push forward and go for the finish. And you're fighting uh, Katani, uh, who's pretty unknown. And I mean, he's, he's coming off a 13 uh, winning streak in Japan. Um, how have you been preparing for him? Have you managed to kind of watch any tape on him? Yeah, I've watched loads of tape. I do that with every fighter. Um, he uh, he's a submission guy. Well, primarily he's a submission guy, but you know you can never underestimate anyone. I'm sure he's working well on his striking, but I feel like I got an advantage there in the striking. Um, that's his weaker aspect of the game, but you know I'm I'm wary where he's strong at. But at the same time, I'm just going to go in there, implement my game, push forward, and uh, and try and put on a great show and try and finish him. But um, his uh, most of his wins have been by submission, first round. So I'm wary of that. You know he's shorter than me. I think it's the first time I've actually fought anyone shorter. So um, I don't mind that at all. If anything, I'm going to let my hands go. A lot more that flies in the way. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. He's, he's a tough guy. He's been around a long time. He's crafty. I remember when I got the uh, got his name through by email by Joe Silva. I thought, right, who is he? That was my first uh, impression. And then when I looked up his uh, his fight record, you know, I, I knew that he's been about a long time. A lot of people underestimate these Japanese guys, thinking they've never fought anybody, but. This guy's the most experienced fighter on the card. He's been in there a million times, so he's know what it's, he knows what it's like. He's, he, he's tasted the UFC before, back in 2007, which never really worked out for him. So this is his second opportunity, so I'm prepared for him to, uh, to, to put up a great fight. You're going to have that crowd advantage over you, and obviously it's his debut coming back from, like you said, in, in 07. Um, obviously you've had a couple, uh, a couple of fights now in the UFC. Do you think you have the upper hand? Do you think he's going to feel that pressure on the night? To be honest, I, I don't really like to get any uh, psychological advantage over my opponent. You know, I'll go in there, you know, if, uh, if he smack talks me, I'll smack talk him, but... Uh, for the most part, you know, I respect him. He's a Japanese fighter, you know, so he's um, he's a well-respected guy. So um, I'm not too sure if he'll feel the pressure. Maybe he will. I, I, entirely, I don't know. But uh, I don't really play into that type of stuff. You know, I go, I just go in and do my thing, and um, I'm just prepared for him to to come out. I'm hoping he comes forward. You know, I, I want I want him to stand and bang with me because I'm ready to let my hands go. I'm ready to uh, I'm ready just to beat him in every department and mentally just break him down and. You know, I, I don't need no crowd to back me up, you know, I'll go and fight anywhere, it don't make no difference to me. But um, what makes it special for me is back in, in home turf, and uh, close to home turf, and uh, getting loads of people that uh, they are very close to me to come and watch the fight, which makes it that bit special. Talking about home turf, um, in the press conference you said that you seem to get more love down in the south of, of Ireland than you do back in the north. Why do you think that is? I don't know, I don't know, it's mostly in the media, you know, like uh, the, general, the general people in MMA up uh, north, the people that do it, you know, they, of course, they support me, you know, to the halt, like, you know, but um, it's just the media, I don't know, I, I feel like they're just scared to step out of the wee circle, you know, they're always just, they only got their selection of sports that they stay within, and, uh, and you know, I'm absolutely disgusted, it's a disgrace, you know, I just can't believe it. You know, this is the biggest fighting organization, mixed martial arts organization in the world, and they can't get behind it. And one time they did do it, you know, they kind of messed up. They they, 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 they they worded me all wrong, so I think I think that kind of scared them off a little bit. But it just takes one guy to go away and research. I mean, this is what the guys down south did, and and, and look at it now. It's um it's all on their terrestrial TV. You know, they're 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 they're, um, they're really getting behind it. They're hyping it up, and uh, and it's great to see that. You know, it's great to see that. It's just um. Uh, a lot of them are stuck in their little, uh, their little comfort zone up there, and I did feel like going up and just hitting them all a back slap, you know, and uh, telling them to wise up. But I guess that is the way it is. They'll come looking for me before I'll need them, so I ain't going to go uh, run my mouth off anymore. Um, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing, and, and they'll come knocking at the door eventually.
do you think that uh, the North will somehow catch up to the South eventually? Because obviously it's growing massively over here, isn't it, in the South? Oh yeah, yeah, it's um, a huge man. It? My coach Rodney Moore, um, John Kavner, um, Andy Ryan, these were the guys, the pioneers from the, the from the start. And we're going way back to the early 2000s, just before that. Um, and back then there was only like three major clubs, North, uh, middle of the country and south. So, um, and look at it now. There's there's clubs that I don't even know about, but they are the the main guys that's been here from the start. That most of them, like my coach, never gets the credit for it that he should. You know, everyone else is always mentioned, but my coach, he's been there, been to America and trained with some of the best coaches, and uh, undoubtedly he's definitely one of the best mixed martial arts coaches I ever trained with. You know, he, for for me, you know, we work well together because he implements. Uh, some techniques that I, I really like. He uses techniques that I like, so he, he brings them to me. Vice versa, so we work really well together and training and sparring, and plus for this fight here, he um, he imitates uh, my opponent really, really well. But the only difference is um, my coach is a lot stronger, which, um, you know, I'm always training with heavier guys anyway, so I feel like I'm one of the strongest uh, fighters out there. I may not look it, but um, <laughs> if I get a hold of you, I ain't, I ain't letting go. But you know they, they're the guys that's been there from the start, and uh, it's great to see that um, you know it'd be good to see actually that they get a bit more support and uh, a bit more publicity. But um, the south is dead great, you know it's definitely come on leaps and bounds. But the north should uh, it's just the media that's all it is, you know the, the general people are fine, you know uh, the people close to me they're all dead on, but it's it's the media, you know I actually hate them right now, you know so screw them. <laughs> Back in uh, the press conference, there was talk about you and Connor if you both uh, fought each other and about filling out a stadium. Uh, what were your thoughts to that comment? You know, he's a sharp, he's a quick-witted guy. You know, I knew I was never going to beat him in exchange there, but um, I know if we ever did fight, I know which contest I would win for sure. You know, he knows he knows I ain't an easy matchup for him. He knows that. You know. But I feel right now they've got different routes. I don't know, he says he wants to move to lightweight, he wants to stay a featherweight, he wants to go here or there. I don't know what, and then he says he wants to fight for the goal, but realistically he's on a, especially with the UFC with him being very marketable and stuff like that. It's probably right for him to go uh, stay at featherweight. And then if he wins there, then he can move up to lightweight whatever way he wants. But um, it's a fight, you know, um, everyone wanted to see it. The whole country wanted to see it. And, uh, and, and back then it, you know, it could have stalled one of our uh, one of our um, our careers back then. So n now that we're on the big stage, more publicity, more people are tuning in. I had a quick, I had a quick answer saying that uh, that that no, that we wouldn't sell it out, that he would sell it out. <laughs> I just had to laugh, you know, because I knew he was going to uh, he was going to be quick there. But um, I was going to reply and say, sure, we could bring it up north and we could do it in Odyssey. I'll sell the Odyssey out, you know, which is what I don't know what the capacity. It's like ten thousand as well. So. Um, but I don't know, maybe one day, one day, but one day I'll be ready. I'm ready right now, actually, I'm ready for any of them. Don't make no difference who it is. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't smack talk, I ain't no good at it. But um, I love listening to it, I know it's great for, um, to hype up a fight, but not everyone's like that. There's always going to be people, people like that, but, you know, I got nothing against him. He's a great, he, he, he's a great um, icon to the sport, you know, and he's, uh, he's a great role model as well. And. Uh, it just reminds me of Bisbang, um, Dan Hardy, whenever he was fighting, you know, I feel like he's going to get um, a few more fights and he'll fight for a title. That's the way they did it with Dan Hardy, they tried it with Bisbang, um, but he came up short and unlucky for Dan Hardy, he's had that there, um, that disease thing in his heart, you know, but, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward, you know, I'm just, I don't really care about anyone else, you know, I'm just looking forward to my fight. And putting on the show. I know all eyes are on other people, but we'll see after this one. So how how important is this win for you on Saturday? Oh, it's great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on, in my mind, I'm undefeated the whole time. You know, I know I've lost before. You know, but recently, um, at all competitions, every every sport, I've I'm I'm, on, I'm unbeaten in my own mind. You know, I'm just unbeaten completely because that last one in Brazil, I know I won it, and he knows I won it. Everyone else knows I won it, and. Um, and this ain't going to be any different, you know, this Japanese dude, this is his second chance, you know, so... But, um... I, I, could, I, tried, to, I tried to, like, figure him out when we stared down last night, but... 
I don't know, it's something about them Japanese, there's just no expression there whatsoever. It was just, he just stared, it's like he was looking straight through me and out the other side. So, you know, they, they've got that, that warrior spirit inside them and I'm expecting, I'm, I'm hoping he can stand and fight with me, but I know he says, he says in the pre he even said it in the press conference, I'm going to take him down and submit him, but good luck to him. So are you prepared for that if that happens on the night? What's that? Are you prepared for that? Have you been obviously w working on that? Here, let me tell you something. I've been, I trained loads over the last year, right? My games completely went from being here to here, right? And uh, and if Division 1 wrestlers find it hard to take me down and keep me there, uh, this Japanese dude, he's not really from a wrestling background, he's got a bit of judo, but I come from a judo background, so I'll spoil him there, you know? If anyone's taking anyone down, it's me taking him down. But I know I know he's got, I know I know he'll try and shoot from a single leg, I know I worked on it, I drilled it. It's nothing I've never felt before or saw before. I feel like um, I feel like I'm 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 far more athletic than him. I'm fast, far faster than him. My striking is ahead of his. Uh, no disrespect, but I feel like I'm I'm just sharper everywhere than him, and that's going to be the the tail of the fight. Uh, I'm hoping to actually catch him in an exchange or a combination and finish him by TKO or something. Okay, so that's your prediction for, for the win? My prediction, try and finish him by TKO. If I got him hurt, I want to make it look good. First try and make it look good, second round. Push the pace a wee bit because he, he seems to slack after the second round. He seems to slow down a wee bit because he puts a lot into the first round to try and go for the finish. So um, I'll, I'll play it nice and safe, you know, I'll fill it out. But you know, if I, if I tag him earlier on, <laughs> don't you, I will go for the finish. Believe you me when I say it, if it hits the mat, I'll, I'll, I'll put heavy ground and pound on him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited for the atmosphere on Saturday? Oh, it's going to be unbelievable. Um, I remember one time, uh, 2010, that was my last uh, proper fight in Dublin here. I fought in a national basketball arena and I, I won by uh, submission. So I'm hoping that this could be a repeat, but not submission. I want a, a TKO or a knockout. That's what I want on my record. Um, I know it's coming, you know, I ain't going to go hunting for it, as my coach says, just go with the flow and it'll come, and once it comes, it's like a box of Pringles, once you pop, you just can't stop, and uh, I thought that was quite funny, you know, <laughs> but um, no, it's going to be a great reception, um, back then there was, I remember, I think they had 4,000 people at the show, and, and I fought in the MGM last, uh, last July, um, last July on the Silva and Wyman card, and I think there was 13,000 fans there, so the 4,000 Irish fans seemed like uh, 13,000 American fans. So that puts into perspective what it's going to be like for you. And uh, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to soak it all up. You know, when I when I step out from behind that black curtain, I'm just floating into the cage. That's what it is. That's what it feels like to me. I'm just free as a bird, you know. And you've got all your family and friends coming down. Yeah. Well, there was a kind of mess up with the tickets up north. I don't know what happened. Ticketmaster. They uh, they messed up all the tickets up north, so a lot of the people up there never never got. I'm going to catch that flight. A lot of the people up north never got tickets, and uh, so, but but I got a few tickets for my really close people, so they're going to come down and. Uh, but I got support, man. I, South is just home to me, you know. I got family down here. I got um, I've been fighting an Irish scene since uh, way back in 2006, so it's just going to be. I'm going to be right at home, you know. We look forward to seeing the fight on Saturday. Thank you for taking time out. Thank you very much.